we're in the um, Belknap Academic Building at the University of Louisville getting ready to do a lab experiment using a Helmholtz coil at a bar magnet and demonstrating and maybe measuring the Earth's magnetic field. So you all know about the Earth's magnetic field and that it you know, directs a compass needle in the direction of north and south in most places um, and there will be a description of this that goes along with this experiment to help you understand how that direction depends on where you are on Earth. Here in this building, which is not exactly oriented by the compass, the direction of north is not parallel to a wall, but the field uh, here is, uh, it has a component which is roughly parallel to the Earth's surface, so we can hang a bar magnet by a string or a piece of fine uh, nylon and let it come to e equilibrium and it will assume a direction which is nominally north-south. On the table in front of you I've got a couple of devices. So we're going to use the one that's on the right. The one on the left gives you another view from the side. These are two coils. They're called Helmholtz coils. Each of these coils has 200 turns of wire. We run a current through the coil, so we go in one side and out the other, loop it around and go in on the back side and in one side and out the other, so that the currents in these coils are running in the same sense, and the coils develop a magnetic field themselves, which is along the axis of the cylinder that the coils shape out. So the things you need to know in order to interpret what we're going to do is that there are two coils, each with 200 turns, and that they'll be carrying current. The cur coils are in series, so the current that they carry in both coils is the same. We can measure the current in a meter, which is on the right, and to determine the magnetic field produced by that current, you'll also need to know the size of the coil. Before we get started, it would be good just to look at the Helmholtz coil itself. It's the most important part of this experiment. So on the right is the one that we use, and on the left is one that is a twin to that, that we can move around and look at more carefully. There's also a magnet, a little bar magnet, which um, is held on a string down in the middle. So it's held down in here like that. This has a north and a south pole. The north pole would be the north-seeking pole, that is, it would point to the Earth's north, north pole. So the definition of poles on a magnet and poles on the Earth are different. Um, if I bring this up next to this magnet, you can see the effect. So the, in the magnet hanging from the string can move around uh, very freely, and then once it doesn't have a force on it other than Earth's magnetic field, it will slowly oscillate. We're going to measure that oscillation. The idea of the Helmholtz coil, that is this device which surrounds our hanging bar magnet, is that it can create a uniform magnetic field which can influence this bar. And we have two coils. There's one here and one behind that. So if I rotate this around, you can see it from the side as well. And you can see there's a scale here which tells us that the separation of the centers of these coils is 10 centimeters. Coils are about a centimeter wide this way, but the wire inside the coil is not really all that thick. You can just see it right in here. It's uh, perhaps five millimeters or a half a centimeter thick. And the wire is sort of heavy. Uh, it's a pretty big gauge wire, or let just say it can handle a good bit of current. So each end of this wire, which is wrapped around here many times, it has 200 turns in this coil. Each end goes to these connectors. So we can put current in one side and get it out on the other. And what we'll do is to apply current so that each coil, this coil and that coil, has a magnetic field which is in the same sense. That is, 
you can think of this coil, the one that's close to you right now, is having a field which is going to be strongest right here in the middle and will fall off in that direction. This one will have a field which will fall off in this direction, and the two together here in the middle create a field which instead of falling off in two separate directions is steady through the center. That is, it's nearly constant over a range of distances here in the middle. And that's why we can hang a magnet in there and have some pretty good sense of what the field is. Now, in this experiment, that's not entirely true because, as you can see, this magnet has some significant length compared to the separation of the coils. But it, you'll see in the analysis of the magnetic field inside these coils that it's close enough to being constant in this region that that's really not a factor, at least in understanding sort of the basics of the idea. So we have two coils. They're separated by 10 centimeters. Each one has 200 turns on it. The current is run through the coil such that the fields add and create a field in the same direction. And if we look at it from this sense, let me just take this stick and hold it up here so you can see that as you measure from roughly the middle of one coil to the middle of the other, you've got about 20 centimeters of separation from one side of the coil to the other. That is, the radius of the coil is nearly 10 centimeters. And we put the two coils 10 centimeters apart. By doing that, making the coils separated by the same distance as their radius, we get the uniform field in the middle. So the next part of this experiment will start applying a field to that magnet that's hanging in there and see if we can measure Earth's magnetic field. Now, I have the um, camera focused on the magnet which is suspended inside those coils, so we can assume reasonably that the field is uniform and that it's along the axis. The magnet's not hanging parallel to the axis because the Earth's magnetic field in this room is not parallel to the walls, and I pretty much squared that up to the tabletop. So when I turn the field on by raising the current in those coils, the magnet should respond by rotating um, because it, it has um, an, an embedded north and south pole and the external field exerts a torque on those uh, to rotate the magnet. So let's see what happens and I'm just going to turn up the voltage which will increase the current. Later on I can show you the current itself while we do this but for right now Watch what happens when I increase the current. So that's a current of about 0.16 amps, and it rotates that magnet over to be parallel. So it tells us that the direction of the field is such that it exerts a torque on the magnet to line it up. And if I rotate, if I rotate this around just a little bit so that the axis is parallel to the coil, Going to be able to watch it very carefully here. So it takes a little bit of time for it to settle out, but let's try it right there. Here's another way of checking that. This is a compass, and if I hold it sort of far away from that little magnet inside so it's not affected by that, the direction of the Earth's magnetic field is that way. The north is sort of off axis like that. And we want the axis of this to line up with that, something like that. That's going to be pretty pretty close. Something about like that. So we're going to wait just a few minutes while that settles out, and then we're going to do this again. So now it's slowly oscillating. There's no external field applied here, but it's just a, maybe a little bit of air current, a little vibration keeps it going. Not much friction in that string, 
And in fact, we have two of these devices here, one held by nylon, one with an ordinary threaded string. And the threaded string is a little quicker to dampen out, which is why I have that one for you here. So if we disturb that, it's going to oscillate back and forth. And mostly what we want it to do is to twist the string. And we need to determine the properties of the string in order to get an idea of how it's uh, affecting the motion. So the way we'll do that is to displace this magnet so it's rotated a little bit off axis and then we'll let the Earth's magnetic field restore it and it will sit there and oscillate back and forth. And what you're going to want to do is to measure the frequency of that oscillation, which you can do by timing the video. I'll also change the zoom so you can see a timer at the same time this is running and then use that as well. But let's start by just rotating it just a little bit and you can watch it. So I'll try to do this gently and then it Now you want to know the frequency of that oscillation. It's not going to depend very much on the amplitude. It will be a little amplitude dependent at first. And then as the oscillations become smaller and smaller, it will be less so. So now I'm just going to zoom out for you a little bit. And refocus a bit so that magnet is sharp. And then I have a timer, which we'll set up here. So that you can see the time as it oscillates. So count a few oscillations and how long it takes for those to occur. You want to calculate the frequency of the rotational oscillation, which is how long from one swing to the other direction and back again to the same place. How many times per second or how many seconds per, <laughs> per cycle for that. It's going to be slow. No external field here. So I'm just going to continue to let the timer run. You're looking for the change in time from the moment that you start counting to when you stop. So it doesn't matter what the actual time reading is. You can also do this using the video and the time on the video frame to, uh, to make the measurement. All right. So the lower meter on the right is the current, the upper meter is the voltage, and I'm going to increase the voltage so that it increases the magnetic field. That's one volt, and the current is about seven hundredths of an ampere. And then I'll displace this a little bit again. It's the rotational motion, not the swinging, that you want to look at. Swinging is a consequence of me touching it. That's seven hundredths of an ampere. I can try to steady that up a little bit. paper here and make it move sideways just a little without, without tipping it. Might work better. There you go. So what's the frequency of that oscillation with 700 of an ampere? Okay, I'm going to increase the current by increasing the voltage. Now we have two volts and 0.15 amps. And measure 
the frequency of that oscillation. Count the swings, count the time for several swings, and divide by the number of swings to get the frequency. So again, let's go up to three. So we have three volts and 0.22 amperes. What's that frequency? We have four volts and point two nine amperes. So what's the frequency now? We'll go up to six. Six volts and point four three amperes. So 8 volts and 0.57 amperes. Ten volts at point seven two amperes. Twelve volts and point eight six amperes. And both 14 volts and one ampere. So, so you can see this a little better, but you'll have to time this now in another way. I'm going to zoom in. And refocus just a bit so you can see it well. That's 14 volts and 1 amp. And I'll back it down again. We'll just go in the other direction. That's 14. We'll go in bigger steps. So we'll go down to 10. That's 10 volts. 0 0.72 amperes now. There's 8 volts and 0.57 amperes.
your six volts. Point four three amperes. So it'll be four volts and point two eight amperes. Here's two volts and point one four amperes. And then I'll turn it off. That's no current at all. So there's no magnetic field from the outside Helmholtz coil. So we've used this simple system of a pair of coils, each carrying a current and generating a magnetic field. The arrangement here is such that the field which is generated by the coils is in the same direction for both coils. So that we have a net magnetic field through here, which affects this bar magnet. And the magnet's also affected by the Earth's magnetic field. And we've oriented the system so that the earth's field is roughly parallel to the axis of the coil as well. And then we've changed the current in the coil by applying a voltage. And as we increase the voltage, the current went up. The higher the current, the more rapidly this little hanging magnet will oscillate back and forth. We can use the frequency of the oscillation to measure the properties of the magnetic field and the response of this hanging magnet to that field.